Cordia Cloud, and we are off. Okay, good evening, everybody. My name is Tanya Sheldon, and I am a Pro 7 out of Meridian, Idaho. And I am going to be talking tonight on getting started. And then we will follow that up by Debbie Crawl, and she will be talking about NERF 2 activation in horses and animals. So, should be a lot of fun. And talking about getting started, I, um, I kind of had a heavy heart with this because this is a really big deal when we start someone. And we as distributors hold a really big impact in the foundation that we give that new person when they come into our business. So rather than talking just all the tactics, because we have separate trainings on the invite and databasing and the follow-up, I really am focusing on that getting started portion of it. And the feeling of it and the feeling that I want you to give to that new person and the responsibility that you hold in really setting the foundation for them to change their life in a really big way because they said yes to this opportunity. So I have my notes and I'm going to be following them because I don't want to miss anything and I just, that's how I work. So in getting started, it, it, it's about them, right? It's about the person that we're signing up and creating belief and excitement. And when are people most excited? It's in the beginning. That's when they're truly the most excited. And in the beginning, you do not want to overwhelm them, but you also want to give them a good picture. And so you want to give them helpful resources and an action plan, most importantly, because it Again, they're most excited in the beginning when we sign them. And if there is a break of time where there are questions and doubt that creeps in, and the more time that occurs between signing up and the training, then the less likely they are to do something with it because they're just going to feel like they don't have the resources to take any action whatsoever. So you really set the tone when you sign someone up and get them started. So show them that you take this seriously. Show them that you are an entrepreneur. Maximize their excitement before any kind of doubt starts to creep in. And the seriousness of how you treat your business, that's going to be an example to them. You want to be that person that like the middler is going to look at you as you're setting them up and say, okay, wow, there, there really is something to this. I'm, I'm kind of excited now more than I was when I came in. And also you want to be that person that the person that comes in that's ready to roll, they're saying to themselves, I definitely signed up with the right person. That's how you want them to feel. So once you sign them up in the system, have resources for them. You want to have a start kit on hand. These start kits, you can get these in your back office and you can also get them at any of the elite academies they go to. You should always have at least one of those on hand. If you don't, you can go to your back office and in the library, you can put, print out the blueprint. No matter what, you want to have that on hand for them, whether it's in person or you email them the PDF of the blueprint and have them print that out before you have the sign up process so it's in their hand and ready to go. So once they have that, any way you do it, I just really believe that it's nice for them to have something tangible, if at all possible, so that you can help them to write or have all of their resources in one spot. Because if they don't have them all in one spot and you're texting something and emailing something or sending them online for something, then they're just going to feel scattered. Really try to have it consistently streamlined in one area for them, whether through an email or the things that you give them in person. So you've signed them up and then they're immediately going to know their ID. So write their ID down in their blueprint and write down their website and then take them to their website and set up their subscription for that following month. Make them a product of the product. What do they want delivered to their doorstep the following month? Now, next, one of the most important things, introduce them to their team. So you're going to know when you're going to sign up a new team member. So you should send out a text to your upline support. Let them know I'm meeting with Tanya on Thursday. I'm going to sign her up with a platinum pack. Who can be available via Zoom to say hello, share their story, and offer up their support? This is going to help build community for them. They're going to get to hear the stories of other people. And again, it's really going to capitalize on the excitement that they already have. 
and hearing the stories of others and then seeing their faces and hearing other people tell them that they're there to support them, that is a really huge deal. And it's so important that you really understand that this business, it gives you the ability to instill belief in people. So more than taking responsibility to help them grow a big business, if you will just put so much focus on instilling them with unshakable belief that whatever they decide to do with their business, they can do it because they know that they have a powerhouse encourager in their life, AKA you. You are that encourager for them. Tell them before I am your business builder, I am your belief builder. Imagine how that would make someone feel. Imagine how that's going to make your new team member feel. So now they know their ID, you've taken them to their website, you've given them that support, when they have that contact support, write down those names, write down their phone numbers so they know how to contact them as well. And they, they know that they have partners helping them, right? Now you're gonna help them establish that why. You're going to help them, remind them of why did they say yes? What are the desires that they have in their, in their heart right now, in their life right now? And break out that income disclosure statement and go through that with them what would be life changing for them in their life right now and help them establish their why because that will also help them put together their shortened story that they can use when they start inviting people to their first meetings. So in this first day that you've signed them up and you've, inv you've introduced them to new people, you probably made them cry by writing down their why and what they want from this business it's probably been a pretty emotional day. It's been a big investment for them as well. So um, now give them something to put them into action. That next thing that you're gonna do when you meet with them next. And they should have an action list for the next meeting within the next 24 to 48 hours. Again, the more time that goes, the less they're gonna do anything. So based on their why, have and what they saw in that income disclosure statement, have them create their goals for hitting pro one, pro two, and pro three, right? We all know the beauty and the sustainability in someone hitting pro three sooner rather than later. And then take them to their back office again, to that training tab, and have them watch the first four videos of the new distributor training. This is only about a total of 14 minutes, those first four videos, but let them know that there will be documents for them to print and fill out or have those documents already printed when you meet with them in person and give those to them as well. They will get the memory jogger in those first four videos and then they'll get the 10 in motion worksheet, which will help them write down the names that they thought of and why they thought of that person. And with the action steps, Here's why you want to give them action steps, some homework. You're really going to get a gauge on their seriousness and also kind of their level of confidence when you do that. Because doers will do the homework. Talkers won't. That's just how it is. So giving action steps gives you a touch point to go back to as well. So when they come back to you and they say, okay, I've been doing a lot of reading. How do I set up my first or my second and third business centers? You can kind of rein them back in and say, I love how excited you are to know more and I will guide you. But first let's focus on the beginning and the right behaviors so that you can get to the point when then you need those questions answered. Just kind of rein them in. You don't want them to get distracted. So you gave them their action list. You set up that next appointment for the next 24 to 48 hours. And again, do this in person or through Zoom. And so now you're gonna find out, did they or did they not do anything? Did they do what they said they were gonna do? And that's again why the action list, the action list is vital because you're gonna treat people differently based on what they tell you. And some people are just really great talkers and not great doers. So you end up spending all this time based on what they say that they were going to do and it end up, ends up being wasted time because they were just talkers and not doers. So if they're a doer and they've done their homework, don't make this next meeting all about you giving them more information. Really make it a conversation. 
we learn from listening, right? So tell them, I'm so glad you followed through with this. This is your phone call. So I want you to be able to ask me anything that you've thought of, any questions that you've come up with based on what you've seen and what you've gone through already. And I will do my very best to answer those questions for you, or I'll find someone for you that does. And again, don't think you have to answer all of their questions when they start asking things outside of this baseline of getting started because sometimes sometimes people the more information that people have actually taking action it creates more entitlement so if they're asking more questions and not doing they're kind of creating entitlement that they truly and they're just truly going to end up distracted right they're not going to put in any action and then they'll be full of excuses as to why they're not talking to people yet and People that often do this that ask a lot of questions and don't put in the action, those are kind of the over-researchers. They're going to ask questions to things they don't need answers to for years. So again, going back to that base point of, I'm really glad that you're excited about this, but let's start from the beginning. And then I will guide you. And when we get to those point of knowing the answers, I will help you get to that point where those are needed. So only answer the questions that are beneficial to them right now. I know when I signed up people many times because I was just so excited to have a new team member. Sometimes I signed up those people that I was a little intimidated by. Like I totally let them lead and I was afraid to take control of the meeting. I was afraid to really show them and tell them what they were supposed to do. And if you are looking for those people that intimidate you, that are motivated and excited, you guys, they're looking for you to lead. They're looking for you to direct them because they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what to do. So take the lead in that and be unafraid of it. They're going to respect you for that. Now, the doers, they've done their homework and they've set their pace in writing down their goals for hitting their first three ranks, right? Because did we talk about what their homework was. I don't know if I did. Oh yeah, we did. So they've, they, the doers have written down where they want to go, how fast they want to hit the first three ranks. And that's a great thing. They're kind of showing you where they want to go and be careful that when they do that, that you don't secretly set up other expectations for them. You know how we um, bring someone in and we're like, this person's going to be a rock star. And you tell your upline how excited you are about them. And you're like, they're going to go pro seven in six months. And then when you meet with them in that second meeting, they're like, here's my baseline. And here's how we're at when I want to get to pro three. And you're like, no, you feel so much faster. Let them set their pace. Don't push them. People will run away from that push, right? So be careful that you are not setting up expectations that they're not actually even putting down in writing because you'll have less tendency to get frustrated with your team if you're letting them lead and letting them choose their pace and let them know that you don't have expectations that you that they are going to set the pace of their business but you can also pull them a bit right not push but pull them because again, people are resistant to pushy people, but pulling means you're letting them know what they're capable of. For example, I, I love that you want to hit pro three in six months, but let's talk about the difference though of what I really think you're capable of. And then showing them the power of doing pro three in half that time, believing in them before they believe in themselves. That's what we're talking about. So in the second meeting, again, you're going over their goals and then you're going over their 10 in motion list, who they've been thinking of in that database and why they've been thinking of. And then you're going to schedule their first meetings. Schedule the first to happen within the next two days and then the other one to happen within the next week. You want them to get this in front of people as soon as possible and again, leverage that excitement. And then help them to use their story and the conversation starters and invites that they learned in video four to really start making their invites to those first two meetings. And inviting and even just looking at the list that they've already created, that's also really going to give you a pulse on their level of confidence. Because if they only have their family members written down and they haven't thought of any friends or coworkers or people from the past, that's when you can kind of ask some more questions like, you know, I see you've only got your family members down here right now. 
tell me what's holding you back. Tell me what is scaring you. Because if that's who they've only stuck to you guys, you know that there is something that is holding them back. There is some kind of pain point that they're afraid to address or they're afraid others are going to judge them on. And that's again, where you can kind of take the reins and lead them into that memory jogger and making that list bigger and why they're making it and, and then using their story to help them get those invites going in a big way and getting them to take action, leveraging their excitement and getting that first paycheck. We all know that that's huge, right? So, um, in helping them also, you guys develop that invite to get people to that next meeting. That's again, where we can go back to really helping them building their belief and reminding them of why they said yes, because how many of us signed up and then completely forgot who we were. We forgot how we were approached. We forgot how we were invited. All of it just became a whitewash. We didn't think of any of it. Suddenly we were just like, oh, I'm a distributor. Oh my gosh, what do I do? Just remind them to stay true to who they are when they get started. Now, real quick, I want to say also, um, you'll have the doers, like we said, but you will also have those that are going to tell you that they aren't quite serious about this and they don't know if they're ready to build. And so sometimes when we hear that, I've had this, so I kind of leave them alone again. I don't um, up my posture. I let them take the lead. But I would say do you still resource those people by letting them know their, their ID, their website, and how to sign up customers and distributors if they happen to start speaking about it. So you could say something like, you'll always pick your pace for your business, but I just want you to understand what this business is about. So even if you have zero plans to do anything with it, would you be willing to give me 30 minutes of your time to just set a baseline for you? And sometimes if you do that, you might find those people that because of the baseline you've set and the excitement you've shown them and showing them the income disclosure statement, they may become a big runner for you. They maybe will. So um, last thing I really want to say too, this is the last thing, is really communicate with that new person. Oh, wow, six pages. Holy cow. Um, if you can mute yourself, guys, that would be so great. I'm going to try to mute everyone again, too. Um, but the last thing I think is really important that maybe sometimes we forget is let them know your favorite method of communication. So if you have a WhatsApp group set up for your team, help them get that app on their phone and help them get connected to you. If you have a team Facebook page, help them get added to your team Facebook page and welcome them, welcome them, welcome them in the most beautiful way possible on that team page. Let them know if, if you're a mom, a husband, you ha have another job, you have children, let them know when your business hours are. Set that precedent that if they send you a text and you don't get back to them right away, that it's not because you're ignoring them. It just means it's not your business hours in that moment, but you will get back to them within the next 24 hours. And also encourage them, if they have a question that they feel others would have resources to, to put it on that team page first. To access that resource first and let them know, I check my team page you know, every 24 hours, so if no one has gotten back to you, I assure you that I will get back to you. I think that's really, really important that you set the foundation that you also have a life that takes precedence for you, that you have a family, and you're giving them kind of also the, um, the okay that they can still be a mom or a husband or, you know, a, a parent while they're building this business, that it doesn't, they don't have to have their phone locked to them because we want people to try to have as much balance as they can. I know that's not a real thing, but just to enjoy this process and have joy with it. So let them know about the communication. That's a really big deal. Okay. So I hope that helped you guys. Um, that's just kind of getting started and that's what I wanted to go over with you. So now we are going to get into the product side of it. And I am going to introduce Debbie Crawl. And Debbie, I'm hoping you are unable to mute yourself. Oh, I see you, Debbie. I'll let me mute you right now. Hi, Debbie. Oh. Hi. 
There you are. Okay, let me properly introduce you. So Debbie Crawl, you guys, she helped pioneer the equine physical therapy industry over 40 years ago. She was very fortunate to have worked on some of the top race horses and jumping horses in the country. She worked on the United States and the Canadian Equestrian Olympic teams. She also owned and operated a custom saddle shop for 25 years. And the therapy business kept her moving up and down the East Coast eight months out of the year. She joined Life Vantage five and a half years ago and is truly enjoying her life today. So with that, Debbie, take it over. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate Welcome. you inviting me on the call this evening. Um, all I can say is that I just get more and more excited every day that I'm in the business. Mm -hmm. It took me a little while to get excited because I didn't know anything about network marketing and I had a lot of fear there. But I did look at the science and that was what turned me on. Um, my whole life has been around horses. I wasn't sure what else I was ever going to do with it. Uh, I did realize after a while it was incredibly demanding physically. And uh, it's not if you get hurt, it's when you get hurt, how fast are you going to come back. And I kind of knew I needed a plan B in place, but I, uh, like I said, I didn't do anything but horses. So this was a real out of the box thing for me. A complete stranger introduced me to this. I was up in Saratoga, New York, and the door signs of my car said, you know, therapeutic equine services. And uh, Justin Brown and his wife, Jackie, had, were up visiting family. And he had just been in the business a short time, came over and him and his wife wanted to show me something. And I'm so glad that they did it that way. Uh, they showed me a blueprint. They came over and didn't talk about it. If they had talked about it, uh, I probably wouldn't have believed them. I probably wouldn't have looked it up. As it was, I have a lot of people that approach me because of the clientele I'm in front of. They want me to sell something. Every week somebody is approaching me about, take a look at this. I'll look at it. There's not any science. I'm just not going to put that in front of my clients. And I was always do my dil diligence. So I looked at it and I didn't believe it was going to be anything special. And he showed me the ABC primetime. Totally blew me away that this was something I didn't know anything about because I thought I really kept on top of things pretty good. And so I was a huge skeptic, didn't believe it, but if it was true, if it was half true, it was something that I knew a lot of people needed because as a therapist for the horses, uh, there's always two or three people standing in line telling me about their knee and their back and the jockeys and we're all beat up in this industry because we have no time off. So I saw this would be awesome, just an incredible uh, thing to have for people. And after a short time, I started putting the horses on it, realizing that, you know, they got the same problems that we do. So what I want to hope connect the dot tonight is, you know, we can't do testimonies, but there's so much science out there. We don't really have to have testimonies. Uh, I've, we don't, it's just incredible what we have. So I'm going to talk a lot about the science because that's what I do when I talk to people uh, about the business or, or the products uh, for their horses or their dogs. Uh, I didn't know anything about PubMed.gov, but that's where I take, it's the first place I take them. What I'm going to try and do is let them know, number one, see the ABC live, uh, video. They realize what oxidative stress is. We've all got it. Mammals have it. Doesn't matter if it's your dog or your horse and horse people. If you got a horse, you usually have a couple of dogs. It's just the way it is. So when you're, you're talking to horse people, you've got quite an audience that you can help. Uh, so I take them to pubmed.gov. And what you want to do, like I said, is after showing them the video, they understand that we have this problem. It's not going away. Every single person has it. Every one of the horses has it. All of their dogs have it. If you can ever get that in their head, uh, then when you, they go to PubMed and you can put in oxidative stress is the first thing I do. And I show them how many studies are done just on oxidative stress. And oxidative, I tell them our product works by using an NRF2 activator. And that's when I quit talking about ProTandem and I just refer to it as an NRF2 activator. So PubMed, oxidative stress, I let them see how many people, how many studies are done on people. There's 189,000 studies. I mean, I tell people, it's like, how much science do you need? Now let's go look and see what goes on with the horses and you can put in equine oxidative stress. Take them to that studies and there's over 300 just on horses. Uh, you can go to canine oxidative stress, there's over 700. And once I get people to understand that oxidative stress and we all have it and that every disease is attached to a high level of oxidative stress and all our product does is remove 40% of that, that's what our product does. It removes it, 
um, at a minimum. And I just tell people how much, how much cell damage do you want to get rid of right now? And so at PubMed, you can go through and you can show them that there are studies done on stallions. There are studies done on racehorses, um, horses under exercise. Uh, I'm so excited. I think there's 11 studies done on laminitis. Again, I don't talk about protandum and laminitis. I talk about NRF2 activation using a pathway to reduce inflammation. Because if you look at inflammation, there are thousands of studies done on inflammation. And for the horse people, we know that arthritis and laminitis are both an inflammatory problem. So now we're not talking about protandum, we're talking about problems that their horse has and it's coming from oxidative stress, what our product affects. And I, I just think that's a very good way of connecting people. I just try and get the words protandum out of the way and start talking about NRF2 activation. Um, there's some things that I use on the horses that uh, we use on ourselves, like true science. Uh, horses have problems like bacterial infections and that, the number four cream from true science is an antifungal, antibacterial properties to it. I use that on the horses for scratches. You guys that are out there don't know that's a bacterial infection on the pasterns, the lower part of the, their legs. A lot of horses have it. It's really hard to get rid of. And I've seen it, the first time I used it, uh, actually I carried a, a tube of True Science around with me for about five months, was never using it because I just was all about protandum in the beginning. And the very first horse I put that on five months later was like, oh, you're an idiot. You haven't been using this. I wouldn't use it on myself, but I used it on the horse. It was incredible. Uh, same way with the dogs. Uh, dogs have got those itchy, scratchy places. Um, I've seen some terrible ears. You know, they smell terrible. They're in a lot of pain. I use the true science number four on that too. Most of the time it's a bacterial infection. Um, dosages, the horses, when I got started, I wanted to know personally, just what is one pill gonna do? And one pill does a lot, especially if that horse is getting to be a horse. Uh, my first, first one was my old guy, he's 25 now. He's pretty happy uh, critter most of the time with all his ailments, but he, it changed his life incredibly in a short time. Uh, and I was actually thinking I might have to put him down. So he's still around five and a half years later. So I'm excited for that. Uh, and we've seen that happen in a lot of situations. So dosage, I just choose one. If they get to be a horse, if they're getting to live outside and walk around, eat grass, which is what they're really designed to do is eat grass 80% of the time. It's not about jumping over jumps and running around in circles and all this circus activity that we ask them to do a lot of times, it puts a lot of stress on them. Our professional horses have really got to be in stalls to go out and do their exercise, which is pretty strenuous. And then they've got to come back in and be stalled. And that's going to cause a lot of inflammation in their legs and their feet and their shoulders, versus. Uh, so I really feel overall the professional horses probably need to. Uh, we're finding uh, good results with that. One in the morning, one at night. We split it up because we want to turn that NRF2 activation on twice a day instead of once a day. Uh, and then there's going to be those cases that are really critical and you might have to give them three. Um, you might have to do that for a few, a few months. Uh, when you see improvement, a lot of times we can back it down by a pill. Once we have got that NRF2 uh, activation turned on, reduce the cell damage, a lot of times you can reduce the dosage. Uh, of course, the dogs are, the dosage is on the bottle, uh, but we do find some of the really big dogs, the 100 pound dogs, and maybe the people can't afford three bottles of, of the pet tandem. Uh, you can put them on half of a pro tandem, which is only $20 a month. Um, if they're, middle age or older, I definitely feel like they need pet tandem in them because you know of the extra ingredients that they have. And I think it makes a big difference in our older dogs and dogs that have uh, really bad health. So maybe they can't have three bottles of pet tandem, but they could have $20 uh, of pro tandem and then one bottle, $25 of the um, pet tandem. I feel like they were, we're getting a lot, lot done with that. So I know we're getting close to time out, um, but say with the science, we are so fortunate that we have the science. Look up canine oxidative stress. You can look up um, equine oxidative stress and put in laminitis. I was, like I said, I was super excited to see there's seven studies done on that. And you can even go in and put either canine or equine oxidative stress and NRF2 activation. And there's also studies there too. So thank you for inviting me. I appreciate the time and I hope everybody uh, gets all your critters on, 
on these, uh, all the products that we have. I do want to throw out that Lily and Marita, I just love her. She's one of my distributors in Florida. She's a, an agility dog trainer. And she uses Red Axio on the uh, days that she has the dogs on the trial. It gives them a lot of mental focus and energy. So use all our products. Thank you. Wow, Axio and the dogs, that's amazing. That's so awesome. I don't want to try that on mine. It's too young still, but that's a great, great tip. <laughs> Debbie, I love talking to you. I feel like you should have gotten the 20 minutes instead of me. That was such great information. Thanks for oh, sharing. No, I don't know how to do this business. <laughs> <laughs> but I love what you said. You said, how much cell damage do you want to get rid of right now? Right? What right. a great, straightforward question for anybody. And then I would also say, you guys, don't be like Debbie and use true science on your animals and not yourself. <laughs> Use it on yourself, too. So thanks so much, Debbie. It was a pleasure having you with me tonight. Thanks, everyone, for jumping on. I hope you have a great week, action-packed, and big things happen in your business. Love you guys. Thanks for coming on. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.